Now, British lawmakers are expected to debate tomorrow whether the UK should leave the EU without a deal after voting down the Prime Minister's Brexit deal in Parliament. The deal was defeated in the Commons by 391 votes to 242, a majority of 149. Let's go now to London for more foreign stories with Joyce Ohaja. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom in London. A growing number of countries are joining Singapore in grounding the Boeing MAX 8 jet following a deadly crash on Ethiopian Airlines in Kenya. Britain, Australia and China have halted flights amid grief from family members after the plane crashed minutes after takeoff on Sunday, killing all 157 people on board. Distraught relatives of the victims have gathered in the capital Addis Ababa, awaiting news of their family members and updates on the crash. We have lost our mother and our brother in the airline and uh, we just came here. We, are, uh, being, we have been assisted by uh, both uh, the, 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 the governments here. The Israeli volunteer rescue service Zaka is helping identify the bodies. Uh, these are volunteers that are uh, specifically uh, um, professional people in finding body parts and connecting them to the personnel. Due to the impact and ensuing fire, the identification of some remains could take weeks or months and may need to be done via dental records or DNA. The U.S. is planning on withdrawing all diplomatic staff from Venezuela this week due to the worsening situation there. Patients awaiting treatment in hospitals are dying. Food is rotting. Telecommunications networks are entirely collapsing. It's worth spending just a minute on how we got here. Nicolas Maduro promised Venezuelans a better life in a socialist paradise. And he delivered on the socialism part, which has proved time and time again is a recipe for economic ruin. The U.S. has requested that all non-essential staff should leave Venezuela amid ongoing diplomatic issues. The decision to vacate the embassy came late on Monday following critical comments from both countries. Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro blames the U.S. for the ongoing power outage. When there are attacks of this type made by the country's opposition, the extreme right wing, they are without any doubt the intellectual and material authors of this attack. Uh, that use high-level technology that only the United States government has in the world. They have used weapons of high technology, and we will know what's happened. Uh, we always know everything because God is with us, and the truth will surface from where they did it, how they did it, who did it. You all will see the truth is written in our destiny. Relations between the two countries have deteriorated in recent months. Algerian students have gathered in central Algiers to protest against the Algerian president Abdelaziz Bouteflika after he decided to abandon his bid for a fifth term in power and postpone an election that had been set for April. We do not accept the extension that was announced. They said new elections would be coordinated. Well, that's fine as long as they are the scheduled elections. We simply do not accept this. Dismay against the president's 20 year rule is growing as people demand a new era of politics in the country. Bouteflika said his last duty would be to contribute to a new system that would be left in the hands of a new generation of Algerians. The president, however, has not stepped down and will remain in power for some time yet, pending a national conference on political change. He's rarely been seen in public since suffering a stroke in 2013. Two of the world's biggest car giants have joined forces and formed an allegiance this week. Japan's Nissan Motors and France's Renault have reshuffled their board of directors since the dismissal of former boss Carlos Ghosn. The chairman of Renault would now serve as the chairman of the alliance, but not as chairman of Nissan. This is aimed at rebalancing the structure as there was no clear replacement after Ghosn was arrested in November. Nissan chief Hiroto Sakawa told a news conference that the alliance seeks an equal partnership, while the companies, including junior partner Mitsubishi Motors, said there will be no change to their cross-shareholding agreements. 
And finally, a unique way to wind down for the evening. An Egyptian shop has challenged people to drink 12 litres of their popular sugarcane juice in one go. The sugarcane challenge was originally created to increase sales, but it's turned into a phenomenon attracting people from all over the world. The winner is usually given 100 Egyptian pounds, that's around six US dollars, but a loser pays the same amount. And that's your international news around the world in five. Thanks a lot, Joyce. 12 litres in one go. Hmm. All right, let's move on to some sports now. And here's Charles Eruka. Thanks and welcome to Sports News. Nigeria's civil defenders will face Morocco's AS Sal in the quarterfinals of the 2019 FIBA Africa Basketball League. Civil defenders edged out host Elan Sportif of Benin Republic 62 to 58 points to finish second of Group B behind Tunisian champions at 12 Sportif Rad. Civil defenders forwards Victor Okwe was in superb form as he powered his side with a double-double of 16 points and 16 rebounds, adding four assists. The first leg will hold on March the 22nd in Sal, while the return leg in Abuja on April the 14th. From basketball to ping pong now, the Nigerian Table Tennis Federation has named a seven-man team for the 2019 World Championships scheduled for April the 21st to the 28th in Budapest, Hungary. African champion Aruna Kodri, Bode Abiodun, and seven-time Olympian Shegun Toriola topped the list for the men's event. The 2018 National Sports Festival champion Ajoke Ojunu will be making her debut at the senior level in Budapest, joined by experienced stars like Olufunke Oshonaike and Spain-based Edema Fiong to compete in the women's singles event of the tournament. According to the NTTF, the tournament would help the players amass individual points for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games and the 2019 African Games in Morocco. Now to football and then the UEFA Champions League. Cristiano Ronaldo scored a dramatic hat-trick as Juventus edged past Atletico Madrid 3-0 to advance to the quarter-finals 3-2 on aggregate. Sergio Aguero scored twice as Manchester City progressed to the last eight with a 10-2 aggregate win after a 7-0 victory over Schalke of Germany. In England, the fan who attacked Aston Villa midfielder Jack Grealish at Sunday's derby against Birmingham City has been sentenced to 14 weeks in prison. Paul Mitchell of Rubery was arrested and charged after entering the field of play in the early stages of the championship game at St Andrews and hitting Grealish around the back of the head and neck. The 27-year-old was ordered to pay £350 in costs, including £100 in compensation to Grealish. He has also been banned from all football stadiums for 10 years. A hard blow against soccer hooliganism, and that's it on the news at 10. That's uh, it on sports news, and it's back to Ijoma with the rest of the news at 10. Thanks a lot, Charles. Trying to end it for me, but let me do it. Thank you. And the main news again. The Independent National Electoral Commission today said that it will hold supplementary elections in the six states where elections were inconclusive. The election will hold on March 23rd in all the states where winners were not declared. And the British Prime Minister Theresa May's Brexit deal was today voted down by MPs just as the National Assembly suspends plenary in honour of slain member of the House of Representatives. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijo Mahonyato. See you. Have a good night.